What's up guys, it's Hatayat Sun and RCT bringing you another video for you guys. Uh, today I want to start something new. Uh, before I do that, I'm hoping that you guys are doing well. Uh, I kind of took a few days off after finishing the series of the Emulator uh, 2019, what's good today. And after I was done with that, I kind of felt like... Man, where should I go from here? I mean, E3 is coming up and all that good stuff. And there's going to be tons of new games and new stuff to cover. But somehow, the emulator series kind of left me like wanting a little bit more. And something that I have been putting off for quite some time, I decided to, you know, go ahead and give it a go. And that's basically revisit an old friend of mine when it came to gaming and uh, who's been with me basically since I started doing videos or a little soon after I began doing videos way back in the day and that friend is none other than this dude right here which is Hyperspin. Now Hyperspin is basically for those of you who don't know what Hyperspin is which I, I doubt there's a lot of people who doesn't but those of you who don't know um, hyperspin is basically a front end or a um, let's call it a software that's that um, its sole purpose is to bring together all of these emulators gaming emulators and have them run from one place now hyperspin has been around for a while and many other people and teams and stuff and creators have come together to do different variants you know uh, now you there's basically they're they're everywhere you know you have launch box you have retro arc you have a whole bunch of these uh, options when it comes to uh, grouping together all of your emulators and stuff and all of your games roms or whatever and put them in one place and make it nice and snazzy and 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 presentable and kind of like cool you know give it um this pizzazz to basically running the run-of-the-mill emulator through these menus and stuff like that you know so hyperspin in you know basically to wrap it up would be a software that brings together emulators so you can run from one place as uh, seamless and user friendly as possible now that being said <coughs> hyperspin to set up is not as user friendly since the project basically became as time went on more and more ambitious wanting to add more and more systems because of course you're never done you know when something great comes along you always try to add to better to get you know to bring it to the next level and so just like I mentioned before um, aside from hyperspin and the different methods that hyperspin has to uh, run your games and run your emulators with the help of course of another add-on to it which is called rocket launcher now both teams they have always um, worked hand in hand they stem from the same place but of course uh, these projects they tend to as they grow up and blow up in size and popularity they tend to fork out to different other projects now given the the last few years the trend of last few years to try not to run stuff with the latest and greatest hardware or the most powerful stuff the trend is more how can we run stuff in smaller devices and portable devices and stuff like that the focus has been drifted or moved to other places hence what came later to be very popular which is um, the Raspberry Pi so a lot of people with the popularity of Raspberry Pi a lot of these teams a lot of these emulators they all focus they kind of like 
drift apart from PC because I guess you know it wasn't challenging enough so I said I, I guess that they thought you know the next big big thing is gonna be this let's head over there it's becoming very popular a lot of people like it they want to do their own stuff they want to create so let's follow them and basically what they did was they came up with another iteration of the hyperspin called of course hyper pie now hyper pie is basically in a, in a nutshell is basically the same as hyperspin the only difference that is accommodated to the lower specs and uh, portability of course of the raspberry pi and similar devices it's not only exclusive to the pi but given the small um hardware that you're working with it's very um it's very inducing to be able to port it to different uh, hardware that doesn't require as much, you know, power. Given that the hyper, you know, the Raspberry Pi is not is not really that powerful. But anyways, not to get um, uh, too rattled, too confused here. The point is that since I had my hyperspin, but I don't have a Raspberry Pi because I, I still haven't gotten one even though Aaron has, has told me that and several other gamers out there have told me of how good this thing is I have been looking at the o Odroid and I'm kind of like getting curious for that but for the time being it's not something I'm gonna work towards to and I'm kind of like having fun with the new card and, and upgraded stuff as you saw with the emulators I wanted to revisit go back to my hyperspin setup which by this time is already outdated obsolete and very old um, and try to bring it to the next level try to see what I can get out of it and boy did I pick a good time to do this because I actually found out that not only did I get or do I have now the options to uh, upgrade my hyperspin to something much better as I mentioned there are other front ends like launchbox and uh, retroarch and some other software that combine the two I didn't want to start from scratch necessarily because I wanted to build something quick right away that I can bring and do videos for you guys as well I want to have fun with it and I also wanted to create content with it so this is what I found Ta -da! I found the perfect fusion, the perfect combination that gave me the awesome thing that I have now, which is basically HyperPi PC plus a track mode version 2. Now, as I mentioned before, but didn't go into detail, setup for this stuff is not for the faint of heart. You know, setting it up for the first time. You know, you get your things here and there, but when it comes to configuring and getting the emulators to run, I mean, there is, if you search through the internet, that there are people who already have pre-configured stuff available. That's basically how I got my image, so to speak, of the HyperPi PC2 with the attract mode. So at least I circumvented um, basically having to set up from scratch the hyper pie and the attract mode and the different files and configurations basically i had that download which i opened to another drive and also given the limited space that i had with the stuff already going on with my drives i had to do some very creative moving and deleting and and copying and pasting in order for me to transform my what was before my hyper spin drive into my new hyper pie drive so yeah there, there's a lot that's going on it's still work in progress of course but this is only the intro um the intro video for it uh so basically i'm hoping that you guys are interested enough to check out not only this video but the other videos that will follow because boy are you gonna be surprised with the stuff that i managed to put in here um, I am very very happy and I'm not even done I would say that in the whole if I were to do this with everything that HyperPi has to offer I don't have enough space let's start from there I, I would need at least a three terabyte drive to at least carry both 
the software that's needed and then of course the games as well the ROMs the images the, the whatever you want to call it all together especially when it comes to the systems that are after like let's say DVD base going on like let's say if we stop at GameCube and Wii like I had my hyperspin probably a smaller drive would be enough however given that now we're seeing as you're gonna be seeing here in my next few videos uh, 3DS Wii U PlayStation 3 even Xbox 360 even though that one is not gonna be a thing until I'm probably a year or two down the road because it's still not fleshed out enough but not only on the console side but you also have arcade games that before were basically impossible to have inside of this thing and not only are they running well really good um, but it's something that is very tailored and very specifically good for the PC because you know you need a power the power of the PC of a desktop to run these games um, they're based on a very very modern architecture uh, for example Sega Ring arcade uh, machines and I'm so stoked with that because I've been having a ton of fun with that uh, which are arcade machines that are based on PC architecture you know uh, gone are the days of the old you know arcade games or arcade cabinets that were based on the home console versions or a stronger version of those uh, consoles now they basically from a year a specific year point in time they have gone and moved full PC so of course they're more beefier more powerful but at the same time they're able or people are able to kind of uh, be able to emulate them with more ease all they need is now is more brute power but enough of that um, tech talk let's go into the screen here so you can see what I have I'm gonna show you since this is the intro I'm just gonna show you the basic setup with the music and I need to make a note here I am very grateful for the guys who designed and built up the HyperPi PC version, all of these versions of track mode because these are people who spend time and money and effort into getting this done. But Lord, oh Lord, the music, the music is, um, again, this is work in progress. A lot of you out there are partial to the, to the music and in this attract mode and the hyper pie thing but I, I need to change this I need to make it as metal as possible I need to to change it but it's work in progress it's gonna take me some time to kind of figure out where those things uh, go so I can place them correctly and maybe even redesign some of the stuff I'm getting to know now the file types and stuff like that that um, entails the attract mode but it's a new system it's not like uh, the hyperspin back in the day that I kind of figured out where I can move stuff around that's gonna take time but again I'm going ahead of myself I'll leave that customization for another video I'm just gonna show you guys what I have and what are the possibilities and the potential of this uh, in the next video I'll have specifically something else so I can show you a bit better and hopefully by the time I end this I'll have a custom made build just the way I like it so far my only goal is to have something that works at least the modules that i am going to use because i'm not going to use the whole thing that the modules that i do end up keeping for myself are running 100 percent perfect that being said let's go over there guys okay guys so here we are at the desktop and we're going to be doing a quick look at how the HyperPi 2 PC setup looks when you run it for the first time. And I'm just quickly going to show you the, the tabs. Um, bear in mind, not everything is uh, standard set up the way that you see it here. I just happened to come across an uh, already available setup and I'm just working on that or upon that. So. Basically, when you get it from scratch, you have to set up everything through here. Where you set up the controls, the emulators, and stuff like that. And then you get to put into different parts of it 
you get to put um, the videos, the artwork, and stuff like that. But this is what I have so far to work with. We have a arcades tab, of course, which you just saw. We have a consoles tab. <coughs> Everything, of course, with its own music and stuff. Intro. There's some of the music like this one that I kind of gravitate and like. There's others not so much, but you know, it's something that hopefully with time and patience I'll be able to tailor to my needs, like I did with the Hyperspin. You have PC games. And of course, the reason why you're seeing this in full screen. Uh, this full screen presentation of each tab is because I have it in what is called the uh, cinematic or dramatic view I think you have the handheld because no collection is complete without handhelds collections which is a tab for you to organize stuff uh, from different third parties that have uh, special collections like you know franchises and stuff like that I will go into them later on. You have the hacks, which is a tab that's specifically made for certain consoles that have variations of games like, you know, Crazy Mario this or uh, Super Crazy Sonic or whatever the hell. Um, so yeah, everything you see weird that's uh, off the path of the regular game, you're gonna be seeing it in this tab. One of my favorite tabs, shoot em ups that goes far beyond the uh, two custom made that I did for Hyperspin. I know uh, Glowing Rice is going to love this one as well as some of my peers from uh, Twitter. Yeah, this one is this one is pretty crazy. I'm not even going to go inside because there's so much to show off so that'll have its own video or videos. <laughs> Next tab. From here on out as you see here, Final Burn is not basically part of the normal tabs, but I added it through the menu, uh, the configure menu, because I love Final Burn Alpha and I know I'm, I go back to this one a lot, so I just wanted to have it on hand. I have another arcade one, but this one is not like the arcade that I have in the first tab. This one is arcade classics, the oldies, you know, that all of them are gonna come where the software basically organizes all of your games from all of your systems and picks and chooses what it deems to fit this category. So very cool, very cool tab. You have MAME, which needs no introduction, of course. Capcom System 1, which has games that I love, and System 2. Cave, of course, because <laughs> I don't need to tell you guys how much I enjoy cave games. Cave 3rd, Data East Classics, Konami Classics, PGM Classics, Awesome Company, Sega Model 3, that from the arcades, this is one of my favorite. Uh, gave me a real hard time in my old hyperspin and I am glad to report that in this one is so much better and that basically covers the introduction guys everything else I will cover in the next few videos so stay tuned for that All right now yeah that basically covers it I hope you guys enjoyed this if you did please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next one that's coming very soon this one I'll cover the features and go more in depth because uh, this one I, I just went on rambling too much so sorry for that guys it's all part of the intro uh, see you guys later take care hot 7